Have you been to Jesus with his cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed Are you washed in the blood? In the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless, solid, white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by your Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each morning in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your bones be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bright? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb, of the Lamb, are you gone? By the sun, white as snow. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb, are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? In the blood of the Lamb, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Come my heart. 
all of you here a special welcome to anybody who is visiting we hope that you'll enjoy yourself and make yourself at home I got a few announcements as we get started our sympathies go out to the Duffield family on the death of Thomas Tom Overton Kay's father and Barb's husband and those would be the flowers that you see here today this week so we'll keep them in our prayers and our thoughts and Keep them in the prayers as, as Barb is uh, for the next couple weeks. Ash Wednesday service is this Wednesday. We'll have services at noon and our normal uh, Wednesday evening service at 6.30. Uh, the noon service will be followed by a lunch at 12.30. If you are interested in an adult mission trip, we'll be having a meeting on January 3rd through 10th in the Dakota Room. If you can't, make it and you'd like to still be find more information please contact me blood drive if you're interested in donating blood March 11th uh, you can see uh, Jim Galbraith's uh, phone number uh, to give him a call in the bulletin we'll be receiving new members on March 24th if you would like to do so please come find me afterwards or you can call Cassie in the bulletin and then we also need some kitchen help on Wednesday. We have a couple kitchen people who are gone. Uh, so if you can help out, that would be wonderful. And last but not least, Calvary Action Project has its hygiene kits. This um, We're going to be collecting uh, shampoo, conditioner, uh, all those little bottles that you get at the hotels. If you're wondering what to do with them, bring them in. Uh, then we'll make hygiene kits for the Hope Center, and they give them out to people who are homeless or home-challenged. Um, and they go very frequently. Other than that, I have one last announcement. Jeff, will you please come up here? Some of you have probably been seeing this trophy up here. 
and wondering who gets it. This is the fantasy football trophy from this year. The, the weekend one. We even have a Wednesday one. And Jeff is the winner this year. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> and he's running away now. And you can't win if you don't play. So remember that. And thank you for all that did play. It was a whole lot of fun. Let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. by the Holy Trinity, one God who stretches out heavens, who sends light to the nation, who gives breath to us all. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Loving God, we confess that we have turned from your way to follow our own ways. Forgive us for the time we have spoken or acted too quickly. We have not spoken or acted at all. We have hurt those closest to us. We have hurt those we have yet to know. We have thought more about ourselves than others. We have thought less about ourselves than we ought. Turn us around and give us a fresh start so that we can live again as your children. Amen. Even when we have done wrong, God makes us right. Even when we have messed up, God puts us together. God's love never runs out. God never tires of calling us beloved children. Hear God say to you now, your sins are forgiven. 
For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. And let us pray. Ever-living God, we ask you to be in our lives. Be with those that are hurting today in mind, body, and spirit. Those who are trying to get out of the cold and wondering when the, it's going to warm up. Lord, help them find outstretched arms of love and support and help them find the hope for a better day. Lord, be with those in our mind today those who are hurt in, hurting in mind, body, and spirit. We especially pray for the Duffield and the loss of Tom Overton. And we also ask you to be with Linda, Carolee, Hazel, Charlene, Alan, Mark, Thomas, Donna, Orlin, Pauline, Charlotte, George, Leona, Raleigh, Bill, Teresa, Florence, Mary, Lori, Nick, Christy, Zane, Mark, Tom, Carol, Gerald, Louise, Jeff, Kevin, Tim, Bobby, Michael, Glenn, Virginia, Bob. And Lord, we ask you to be with all of our military first responders and their families, those who put their lives at risk and don't always get the thanks that they deserve. Lord, bless this congregation and help us to be led by your Spirit and not by our own. Guide us in this day, we pray. Amen. One, two, three. <laughs> Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. It's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old. Our first reading this evening is from Exodus 34, 29 through 35. 
Moses' face is shown with the reflected glory of God after he received the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. The sight caused the Israelites to be afraid, so Moses wore a veil to mask the radiance of God's glory, taking it off when he spoke directly with God. Moses came down from Mount Sinai as he came down from the mountain with two tablets of the covenant in his hand. Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking to God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses spoke, called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he spoke them in the commandment. All the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put the veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And, then, and when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites could, would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses put would put the veil on his face again until he would went to speak to, with him. The second reading this evening is from 2 Corinthians 3, 12, 4, 2. In his debates with the Corinthians, Paul's contrast, contrast the glory of Moses with the glory of Christ. The Israelites would not see Moses' face because of the veil. But in Christ, we see the unveiled glory of God are transformed into Christ's likeness. Since then, we have such hope, such a hope, we act with great boldness. Not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the glory, of, at the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened, indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there. Since there is, since only Christ, in Christ we, it is set aside, indeed to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and there, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the, the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror. They are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord of the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to, set, to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to, be, to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. This here is the reading of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the ninth chapter. Now about eight days after saying, Jesus took with him Peter, John, and James, and went up to the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in the glory and were speaking of his departure, which was about to be accomplished at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with them. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. 
While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When, he, when the voice had spoken, Jesus found, was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days they told no, no one about anything that they had seen. On the next day, they had come down from the mountain. A great crowd met him. Just then, a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is only a child. Suddenly, a spirit seizes him, and at once he shrieks. It convulses until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him, and it scarcely leaves him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, you faithless and perverse nation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the spirit, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the boy and gave him back to his father. And all were astonished at the greatness of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and will the kids come up and join me up here at the puppet stage? How are you all doing? All right. On the count of three, we'll say puppets come out. One, two, two three. three. Puppets. Come puppets. Hey, Mo, you got big plans for Transfiguration Sunday? Transfusion Day? You mean to get blood? Phew! Gross! No, no. <laughs> no Transfusion Sunday. Transfiguration Sunday. Do you really mean the church has a Transformers Day? That has been a dream of mine for years. Hey, Transformers, more than meets the eye. Come to church. No, no. Transfiguration Sunday. Transfiguration Sunday? What's that? Well, it's when Jesus... Hey, what are you guys up to? Well, Cookie was just telling me about Translation Sunday. What is Transfer Sunday? Oh, you guys are driving me nuts. It's Transfiguration Sunday. Well, what is that anyway? That is when Jesus went up to the mountain to pray. Well, why didn't they just call it Prayer Sunday? Well, that would be much easier. Will you two just be quiet? I was not done. Jesus went up to the mountain to pray with Peter, James, and John. Are they a singing group? No. Peter, James, and John are not a singing group. They are disciples. So while Jesus was praying with his disciples, his appearance changed, and Moses and Elijah were there with him. Aren't those men from the Old Testament before Jesus was even born? Yes. Wouldn't they be dead? Yes. They were with God, and they did come back. They just appeared. Whoa! Jesus was hanging out with ghosts? Scary! They were just there to support Jesus, so it wasn't that scary. Then the voice of God said, This is my son, my beloved, listen to him. Jesus and the disciples heard the voice of God? 
That's so cool. That is cool. But I have a question. What is it? Did Moses and Elijah stay there, or did they just disappear? They just disappeared after talking with Jesus. And what about the disciples? What did they do when they saw Moses and Elijah and heard the voice of God? They got confused, and Peter said to God that they should stay on the mountain. Well, did they stay on the mountain? Well, would we be here if Jesus stayed on the mountain? No. Jesus went down to be with the people and to heal more. Well, what do you do to celebrate Transfiguration Day? Honestly, I do not know. It does seem like we should be celebrating somehow. Well, I'm going to change the name to Jesus Transformer Day. He is definitely more than meets the eye. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Oh, you two. We better get out of here and figure out how to celebrate. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Have goodbye. a great week. Too many decisions. Let us pray. Oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you. And may they hit willing and eager ears. Lord, be with us here and now. Amen. So it's not Transformer Sunday tomorrow. It's Transfiguration Day that day of the year that we commemorate and we remember Jesus walking up the mountain to pray. And Moses and Elijah appearing in front of him. And often it's asked, why was Moses and Elijah there? We need to remind ourselves what, what Moses and Elijah were doing when they were in the Old Testament and they appeared, Elijah spoke to the people when they were in the exile, trying to bring a word of good news, trying to get people to change their lives and come back to God. People were desperate to hear a word of hope. And Elijah was trying to speak hope in a hopeless situation. And Moses, well, his whole job was to lead them out of Israelite into the promised land, or out of Egypt into, the, into Israel to the promised land. His whole job was to deliver them. But he never got to see that. And he dies up on the mountain, and Elijah disappears. And so we hear them coming to Jesus. And I don't honestly think that they came for Jesus' sake. They came for Peter, James, and John's sake. So they could see that Jesus was going to be the accomplishment of all that was said. All that had been united in the Old Testament was going to be delivered by Jesus. He was going to deliver them out of a hopeless state and into the promised land. As he welcomes us to our promised land when we breathe our last. But there we have Peter, James, and John. And do you think they got all that? No. They're confused. And we would be too conf confused if we were up there. 
But there Peter was saying those words, God, Jesus, it's good for us to be here. We need to be here. He needed to hear and know more about Jesus. Even when he was confused, all he could do was grasp on to Jesus and hold on tight. Even amongst his confusion, he recognized that something was happening. Then immediately they obviously go down the mountain. And we hear now somebody coming forward and saying, heal my son. Heal my son. I tried to get the disciples to do it, but they couldn't. They couldn't figure it out. And Jesus immediately heals the son. And that's when it gets interesting. What do we hear? And all were amazed and astounded. It seemed that everybody got exactly who Jesus was for that very split moment. Jesus was that pause in their life of chaos, of their hurt. Jesus was that pause that said, there's a better way. There's a new day, and it's coming. There's two ideas. Peter wants to pause up on the mountain because he wants to see more of who Jesus is. The people see Jesus pausing in their pain, in their suffering. We find a lot of times we need pause in our life to see Jesus more. A lot of times chaos happens. And we're wondering where Jesus is. And sometimes it's good to remove ourselves and go up on the mountain. I know this is probably even unfair because around here the mountains would have some snow on them. And you're probably angry looking at that going, that's not what our mountains look like. But we find that ourselves needing time to go and recollect and take moments out of our life to see Jesus more. But sometimes we walk away still a little confused because we don't recognize that we know that Jesus was there and renewed us, but we didn't quite feel it. And then we also know that Sometimes when we come down and Jesus meets us in the valley, the hard times, the pain, we recognize it so clearly. You know when you hear stories of where people met with Jesus? How many, most of the time, they're probably stories of where Jesus met them in the pain. There are countless stories of where Jesus meets us in the pain. But as I was preparing for this sermon this week, I couldn't come up with too many of them. But I did come up with one. From one of my friends, his name's John Oldhorse. You've heard his story. You've met him before. But instead of telling me telling his story, I'm going to ask you to hear his side. When I went to Iraq, I was very strong in my spiritual beliefs, the Lakota beliefs with the Chinupa. But when I went over there, I started to see a lot of things, started doing ugly things to ugly people. And when I came home, I came back broken, destroyed mentally, physically, spiritually. It took a lot to really get those things situated in my life. And a lot of years, it's going on 10 years now. And so when I came home, I lost all faith. I didn't pray anymore. Didn't feel worthy of it. I lost my family, my children, my wife. I just had a lot of questions, a lot of sadness and hate of myself. It took attempting suicide twice to really have to talk to the Son of Jesus come and save me. The last time that I tried to do that, He came and He saved me. 
came in my house and I charged my weapon, about ready to pull the trigger. Came, as I asked him to. And I don't care what your name is. If it's Tukashi Allah or Jesus, just just help me. I don't want to live this way anymore. And when my room lit up white, I could feel that love of how how you are with your firstborn child. And he saved me. After, After all, all the things, things that I said, I said about, about him, all, all the things that I said, I said about people, people that followed him, him he, still he still found me worthy of his, his love, and, and he forgave me. And because, and because of those things, things I understand that, that he knows us all, all and that, that it goes, goes beyond, beyond culture, culture and language. language. And, and to this, this day, I'll always, always walk, walk and, and spread his, his message of all, all the things that he gave to me, because he did give my life in this world. Oh, catch it. I hope you heard his words as well as he spoke them. I know the sound didn't work as well as I'd like it to. But when I had met him, he was in a very dark spot. And then one day, he's not. And it was about sitting in his dark apartment on his knees, saying, God, Jesus, Takashala, I don't know who you are, what, what name you go by, but I need you in my life. Being down on those knees and reaching up. And God paused his life and shown a better day. We're going to begin Ash Wednesday in Lent. And we're going to begin a new sermon series, and it's called Merely Pause. And today we're asking you, what are you going to need to pause in your life on Ash Wednesday through Lent? Because I think we all need some kind of pause. Maybe it is just pausing from the chaos and finding a time to go up on the mountaintop. Even if the mountaintop isn't an actual mountain. Finding a time to get away and recollect. Maybe it's asking God to come in your life, in the midst of your pain and your suffering, and continuing to ask for God to come in the midst of your pain and suffering knowing that he will enter into it. Maybe it's somewhere in between. Maybe your world gets so caught up and you're not sure where the better day is coming. Or you're so busy in your life that you just need time to rest. Our job is to reach up. To God, knowing God is always there reaching down to each of us. But He's waiting for you to put your hands up and say, I give up. I need you in my life. I need you now. We know you need pause in your life. So we're asking you today to start thinking about that. And we will be preaching through those pause moments. And you'll even be asked to share them. There'll be a prayer wall out there. We're asking you to put that on Facebook and help others find time to pause in their life. May you reach up to God and may He help you pause in your life. Amen.
to Canaan's land I'm on my way where the soul will never die My darkest night will turn to day where the soul will never die No sad Gracious and merciful God, we thank you for our gifts in our life, our time, our talents, and our possessions. We know we are a people of blessings. May we use all the blessings in life to further your kingdom both inside these walls and outside wherever your calling is to be. Lord, we pray. Amen. On the night's betrayed, our Lord took bread, broke it, and gave thanks and gave it to all to eat, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup of the new come my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this remembrance of me. For as all we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's presence here and now and for us. Now let us pray the words our Savior continues to teach us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lord's table. All are welcome. Come, eat. This meal is for you. The Spirit of the Lord has sent us to bring good news to
Trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, and in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing, cleansing blood. Jesus, Jesus, how I Trust him, I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Uh, thank you to all the bluegrass musicians. Uh, I'm sure you came in here cold and you're walking out of here a little bit of more warm heart. Give them a round of applause. We welcome and inspire all with grace, courage, and love. Reach up. Reach in, reach, reach out. out. We're getting it. Woohoo! I'm on my way to the fair land where the soul of 